In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the post-lab questions for lab one. I'm not going to talk about the procedure. We're just going to go straight to the data analysis. So this post-lab assignment is going to start off with a couple of data tables. Some of the information on these data tables is data that you will collect while you're doing the lab procedure. So the stuff I'm highlighting now, these are numbers that you will be writing down, data that you're collecting while you're performing the procedure. I'm just going to put some hypothetical numbers in here like let's say that our solid sample had a mass of one gram let's say that the virtual fluid was five milliliters and then the fluid plus solid let's say that that was nine milliliters um, I have no idea how close these numbers are to accurate I'm just making numbers up please don't turn your assignment in with these numbers um, that's not the data that I'm expecting you to collect so the last two columns here, these are things that you'll be calculating from the data on the table. The first thing that you're calculating is the volume of the solid sample. And we'll do that by using these two volumes right here. Notice that you have the volume of the virtual fluid. I'm pretending like it's five milliliters. And then you also have the volume of the virtual fluid plus the solid sample combined. Now you know that the volume of the virtual fluid is five milliliters. So we know that this is five milliliters. Five milliliters plus whatever the solid sample is, is nine milliliters. And you guys can totally do that math. That's a difference of four milliliters. You do want to show your work down here. You can just show nine milliliters minus five milliliters is four milliliters. And the last column, you're calculating the density of the solid sample. Density is the mass in grams divided by the volume. The mass, that's gonna be really straightforward because there's only one mass. So in my hypothetical data, that's one gram. Volume, you gotta be a little bit careful because look, we've got three different volumes. You've gotta make sure you're plugging the correct volume into this equation. Since we are calculating the density of the solid sample, we want to use the mass of the solid sample and the volume of the solid sample. We don't want to use the volume of the virtual fluid or a combined volume. That would not make any sense at all. We want the mass and the volume of the solid sample. So my volume of solid sample was four milliliters. This is going to be 0.25 grams per milliliter. Definitely not. The density of ice but remember this, these are just numbers that I'm making up as we're going along so that's the first three problems the second three problems are really similar just kind of a reversed scenario so it's gonna feel really familiar you're gonna have three sets of data that you collect while you're performing the experiment it's gonna be a volume of a liquid a mass of a beaker and then a mass of a beaker plus a liquid and then you'll be asked to calculate the mass of the liquid sample just like in the previous problem we're doing that by taking the difference of these two numbers I'm gonna just, let's just throw some numbers in there. Let's say the volume of our liquid sample, mm, let's say that that is, uh, let's say that that is eight milliliters. Let's say our empty beaker is five grams and the beaker plus the liquid, let's say that that is 15 grams. Um, so we want the mass of the liquid we know the mass of the beaker from this measurement, the mass of the beaker is five grams. We don't know what the mass of the liquid sample is, but we know that the beaker plus the liquid sample is equal to 15 grams. So again, we've got that very complicated math. I'm being sarcastic. 15 grams minus five grams, we're just looking at the difference, is 10. And then again, we're gonna calculate the density Density is going to be mass over volume. And again, you want to be careful. We've got three masses to choose from. We want the density of the liquid sample, which means we want the mass of the liquid sample, not the mass of the beaker, not the mass of these two things combined. We want just the mass of the liquid sample. So that's going to be 10 grams divided by the volume. We only have one volume to choose from, 8 milliliters. Um, and that is 1.25 grams per milliliter. 
So once you get those two data tables complete, then you're gonna move on to the next part. Um, this next set of information first, you are just filling this column in based on your observations. So did, it, uh, did the solid in each one of these sets, so here's a set, liquid is ethanol, solid is ice, did the solid sink or float or hover? And you guys know what that means if it's so here's your liquid if it sinks that means it's down at the very bottom touching the bottom uh, if it's floating that means it's all the way up at the top of the surface of the liquid and hovering is going to be anywhere else so if it's high but not all the way at the top or if it's low but not all the way at the bottom or anywhere in the middle we're just going to call that hovering which substance has the greater density um, so, in general, whether we're talking about a liquid, in, a solid inside a liquid, or two liquids together, or whatever the case might be, um, the thing that is down on the bottom has the greater density. It's heavier, so it's going to sink. So, if we, have, um, if we have a solid down here at the bottom, then that means that the solid has a greater density than the liquid. If our solid is up here at the top, then that means the liquid has the greater density. So whatever is hanging out down here at the bottom, that's gonna be the object that has the greater density. If it's hovering in the middle, it's, if your solid is hovering in the middle, that means it's not down here at the bottom. So if the solid is hovering in the middle, um, actually, a lot of times when the solid is hovering, it, it usually means that the objects have really similar density. So if you have a hovering scenario, you're just going to have to kind of like, there really isn't a wrong answer for you to give to this. You just kind of like use your best judgment. Exactly where is it hovering? Is it hovering down low? Is it hovering up high? What do you think? You get to make the call on that. Um, don't let it stress you out. Down here, question number eight, I answered that question with this explanation right here, so I'm going to skip over that. Um, question number nine, so you're not collecting any data for this, you're just, you're just going to do the experiment for part four, and then you're answering the question, um, which has a greater density, and you can use this this sort of picture right here. This is water and mercury are both liquids. So when you pour two liquids together, they're just gonna be like two layers of liquids together. And whichever one is down in the bottom is gonna be the one that has the greater density. And you'll be able to tell which is at the bottom because they look different. And then we've got um, one more page, one more question, and this is actually a really tricky question. So this is talking about part one. In part one, you had this graduated cylinder, you had liquid in it, and you dropped a piece of aluminum, a sphere of aluminum inside that liquid, and then um, you used your data to calculate the density of the aluminum. So we're gonna say that this is our aluminum. You calculated its density by taking its mass and dividing it by the volume. The mass you got from the balance, so you, you weighed it, um, how many grams it was, and that you did that just by setting that piece of aluminum on the balance and, and measuring its mass, and the balance can't lie. You know, the, the aluminum is pushing down on the balance, whether it's hollow or whether it's solid, not hollow, um, the mass that the balance reads is going to be the accurate mass. And so this is just always gonna be accurate. Balance is not lying to us. The volume of this sphere you measured by doing the volume displacement. So you measured the, the volume, ooh, that was more than I wanted to erase. You measured the volume of the liquid all by itself, and then you dropped that aluminum block in there, the volume increased, and you said, um, okay, so whatever that volume displacement was, that must be the, the volume of the aluminum. So this volume was measured by displacement. And this displacement concept, you know, really rests on the, the idea that the aluminum is solid. So this aluminum, you know, is a, even if it was hollow, it would be a completely intact hollow sphere and it would be displacing 
the volume that would, whether the aluminum sphere was hollow or not hollow, it's going to displace the exact same volume inside the cylinder because it has the same radius and that's what's being used to calculate, um, you know, just the volume here. So whether it's hollow or solid, the volume um, is going to be measured exactly the same whether the whether that sphere is hollow or not hollow so this measuring by displacement could be inaccurate measuring by displacement is only going to be accurate if the aluminum is not hollow if the aluminum is hollow which is the hypothetical situation we're considering then that volume will be incorrect and that's what this question is asking. So if the aluminum sphere in fact was actually hollow, that would mean that this volume is inaccurate. It's not asking you to calculate what it would actually be. It's asking you just to calculate whether it's too high or too low. So you've got to walk through a scenario. First thing you have to do is figure out um, if the aluminum was actually hollow, is this number that I collected in this measurement, is this number going to be too big or too small? We know that it's going to be incorrect. Is it going to be too high or too low? And then based on what you determine there, if this number is too high, then what does that do for density? If this number is too low, what does that do for density? So hopefully that kind of gives you enough hints that you can get started on like solving this problem. First of all, again, mass, no matter what, that's gonna be an accurate number. Volume displacement is only accurate if the sphere is solid, not hollow. If the sphere is hollow, this volume is inaccurate. You need to figure out, is this volume that you measured, is the volume that you measured going to be inaccurately high or inaccurately low? And once you get that figured out, then you'll be able to figure out, is the density going to be inaccurately high or inaccurately low?